Hey everybody, something a little different today. I'm out here on the Fullerton Loop in, uh, well, Fullerton, California. And 90% of bikers out here are gonna be on mountain bikes, either hardtail or full suspension. But what you don't see a lot of out on this trail are gravel bikes. Gravel bikes like the new Poseidon Redwood that I'm riding here. Now the Redwood is arguably one of the best gravel bikes you can get for under $1,000 US. So I was really excited to partner up with Poseidon and get some miles on one of my very own. I can't talk and climb, shit. And I should be totally clear that this bike here was supplied to the channel for a review, but all thoughts and opinions are my own and this is not a paid sponsorship. So what does the Fullerton Loop have to do with the Poseidon Redwood? Well, the Poseidon Redwood was designed for the Fullerton Loop, literally. Now speaking with Lewis, who owns Poseidon Bike, he mentioned that he and his buddies used to do a lot of retro modding of 90s mountain bikes and take them on this loop and rip around the local mountain bike trails. So when they were forming Poseidon Bike, they decided that they wanted to make an affordable gravel bike for the masses that was designed to handle a local mountain bike loop like this. Now this trail is mostly green runs as far as mountain bike runs are concerned, but there are some pretty chunky bits and a couple of punchy climbs. So a gravel bike designed for the Fullerton Loop needs to be rugged and off-road capable, which the Redwood is. Anyways, so in this video, I'm gonna take you on a tour of the Fullerton Loop, or more commonly the Floop, on the Redwood, and we'll see how it does in its birthplace. That sounds weird. In its natural habitat. All right, so first big question, of course, do we take the straight shot down the fire road, or up there, there's a little bit of single track through the trees. Uh. All right, let's take the single track and see what happens. Warning, steep grade ahead. Okay. Oh man. Better go drop bar. Oh yeah. Oh. Hey. Little drop. Yeah, the Fulton Loop is like 95% off-road, but like weaves in and out of the city. It's still fun for a local loop though. Yeah, so the Redwood is an alloy frame and fork. It's designed around 27.5 inch wheels, massive clearance for tires, up to 2.8 inches in width, and it comes in a flat bar and a drop bar option. I opted for the drop bar, but I may experiment with that in the future. And the geometry on this frame for a size small, which is what I ride, is uh, not quite as relaxed as I would expect for a bike that's largely designed for pure off-road use, but so far it hasn't proven to be twitchy at all. Now for long steady climbs like this, the 71 degree head tube angle keeps things under control and doesn't make it too difficult to steer. The basic Kendanambis are 2.35 inches in width. And yeah, as far as gravel bikes go, this thing's been grippy. I mean, these are like full knobby tires, so I guess that's what I would expect. Can't decide if I'm riding a mountain bike or a gravel bike right now. All loose sand. Uh, see, normally I'd be washing out right here on my uh, Gravel King SKs. I just kind of floated right over that loose sandy stuff. All right, what else? Bike comes with Microshift's Advent X 1x10 drivetrain. Range on the cassette right out of the box is 11 to 48, I think. I also like how they put a 38 tooth chain ring on here because they know you're going to be doing some climbing and owners of this bike may not care about outright speed. The gearing is plenty low for these short punchy climbs. Oh, here's like a rooty uphill part we can do some testing on. Yeah. Get up. Do a little pedal strike, no big deal. All right. Hey, watch your downhill speed. So far, the alloy frame is not as chattery as I would have expected. Uh, it's hard to quantify these things, but it's, you know, it's a little bit harsher than like my carbon diverge. But this bike is right out of the box and it's not even set up tubeless yet. So I imagine after a couple of modifications, you get this thing feeling nice and plush. Started with 20 pounds, this is a little bit bouncy. I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. There we go, drop bars. <laughs> now this is probably the punchiest climb on the whole loop. I don't know what the percentage is up here, 
definitely double digits. I'm gonna guess like maybe 18%. Oh, I'm not slipping like I usually do. All right, not too bad. All right, check this out. I gotta reinvest into the channel, baby. This is Insta1, no, Insta3, it's too many numbers. Insta360 1X2. I've been eyeing this camera for like a year now. Gotta up that B roll game. B roll. How's <laughs> a B roll if there's only one person? Speed go. There's this little single tracking parallel section. That 48 tooth cog is, yeah, it's been kind of clutch. Speaking of clutch, driver train is really silent on all these bumpy trails because the advent derailleur is clutched. See what I did there? Yeah, so far I really, really like the shifting on the advent X braking. Yeah, I know a lot of people have issues with the brakes. I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt to, you know, proper bedding process, give it a couple rides. The spring action on the levers is actually just really stiff and the pivot point is actually quite low. So from the hoods, you don't have a ton of leverage, although it hasn't really been a problem so far. And then from the drops, you really have no issues uh, with braking. Definitely strong enough for anything on this trail. For instance, a little downhill right here. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. All right. So that was basically Floop on the Poseidon Redwood. How was it? It was awesome. Yeah, it was fun. Now, do I believe this bike was purpose-built for this trail? Yeah, I can definitely see that. You know, you got the knobby tires, 27.5 wheel size, relatively relaxed geometry. You know, I am coming from my Diverge, which has like a slightly slacker head tube angle. But even still, this didn't feel twitchy at all. And I'll admit, I don't know the trail number off the top of my head, so it's hard to compare apples to apples. Now, like I said, I do have a full review in the works, so stay tuned for that. But for a sub $1,000 gravel bike, I don't see how you can really beat this, to be honest. Anyway, stay tuned for the review video if you're interested. And I'll have a couple of other videos featuring the Redwood as well. We got one last little downhill bit here before we get back to the car. But for now, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.